Hello folks, this is Coco. Uh, this is me doing the scribe trials. Since I have mentioned in the series that I do want to do these, but considering how difficult they are, uh, I don't want to waste Kime and Konetsu's time forcing them to sit through all this. Uh, this is something actually that has already been recorded. Um, this is just some commentary I'm doing in the beginning. I asked them which of the constellations and triumvirates we wanted to go to next, and we decided to go to the Chastity, which is, oh, Manly, that, uh, that, uh, oh, frick, uh, Sap, yeah, that dude, that dude. So, uh, we learn, we, we are told a little about him, and then we have a conversation with Pamitha. Um, but other than that, this entire video has- Oh, let me read. Your next adversaries are to be the Chastity, headed by H. Manly Tinterstelf. They would prevail on their rights not for their freedom, but for fame and fortune in your commonwealth. You and the lone minstrel then go over what he knows of your next adversary. H. Manley Tinderstall, the offspring of a semi-famous sap industrialist. He was born into wealth and lived in the lap of luxury, never having to fend for himself. When he came of age, he soon was offered cushy ambassador positions that required little more than a silver tongue to convince the Commonwealth that he was keeping busy. He soon grew so proficient at doing nothing much at all that he started spending all his family's riches to assert his fame and status. One day he attempted to pay off the wrong individual, a particularly stern Commonwealth diplomat who promptly turned him in and had him sent downriver. Manley was very disappointed by all this, but soon saw it as an opportunity for he knew well that in the inner circles there were those who had gone into exile and returned. Thanks to his connections, he tracked down the chastity deep in Waking Wood. He finagled his way into the triumvirate using his well-worn skills. He in turn convinced himself that he would earn a position of great influence once he secured a way back to his home. He continues making hollow promises. A shame that this man and the chastity are nothing like the scribe's loose Glorian, who do not share his value. Now it is time we rested, reader, giving all today's travails. You bid the lone minstrel a good night and take your leave. It is now too late to prepare for flight, so you arrange to depart first thing in the morning. Uh, here I kind of debated for a while whether to go to and start doing scribe trials or talk to Pamitha, but I decided to talk to her since I was afraid she might be gone if we did the scribe trials first. Despite Pamitha's mental conditioning, you can tell something is troubling her. She won't listen to a word I say. Not one damn word. If she weren't my blood sister, I should think I'd hate her guts as much as she hates mine. <laughs> she shakes her head. That is bonsai, yeah. I should apologize. To you and everyone. They sought out Tamitha without asking your leave. Figured I would rather seek forgiveness than permission, you understand. My attempts with Tamitha didn't amount to much, as you well saw. So at this point, I'm hopeful you'll be more accepting of apologies than she is. Though, tell me something, reader darling. Do you suppose I'm going to betray you? You may know better than I do at this point. Pamitha wishes to know where you think her loyalties lie. Say that you trust her loyalty has to be earned. You believe that she will stand with the Nightwings. She made her... She made quite clear that her priority is to her blood sister. And in this... I mean, Pamitha strikes me as someone pretty, pretty forthright. Like, yes, she did kind of go behind our backs, but honestly, I wouldn't even really consider that going behind our backs, just talking to her sister. 
Um, so, I mean, I chose to trust her, and I'm pretty sure that Kanetsu and Kime would have been on board with that. Cause I, I mean, I can understand wanting to at least get some closure. We still don't really know... Well, yes, we, we do know what happened between them, but we still don't really know what uh, Pamitha's reasonings were. And my guess is that she just felt it would end in a needless bloodbath. So, rather to get them cast into the downside than be dead. And that's just my guess, though. You express to Pamitha that you do not view her efforts to make peace with pa Tamitha as being contradictory to the group's larger goals. You understand why she did what she did. She says nothing for a while. That's kind of you to say, darling. May the others see it with such generosity. But if they don't, you need but tell me to depart and I'll be on my way. However, I have a promise that I wish to make to you. You let me stay, and I'll see this through with all of you, no matter where we all end up. I'll be on the roof for a bit, I think. You take care too, darling. Despite Pamitha's disappointment with the outcome of her confrontation with her blood sister, you sense she is less troubled now after your brief conversation. Uh, and yeah, I guess from here on out, um, the reason I kind of re-recorded re this, the audio, my speaking afterwards is because, uh, in an earlier recording I had to mute the microphone for something and I forgot to unmute it. Um, but yeah. Uh, with headwinds, I think it took me like five or six attempts. With, uh, with rays, it only took me one. So, I'll probably just let you see one of my failures and speed through all the others and, yeah. <laughs> it might be more entertainment if you could hear my screeches of frustration, but I cannot, uh, I cannot mimic those. So, hope you enjoy this.
erzähle ich dem Master. Mon Protrage je pas logé. Fabricare. Je serai tombé. Silencio, mi Francis. Adiós, mi.
senza meno scaraggi. Fiore Paloge. Sinan Matuchan. Tereso. Hi, Dr. Huxley. Hello, little Charlotte. About the little talk we had earlier. Can you do me a favor of looking after my lovely nephew for a couple of days? I've been so busy working on the cure for eye plague that I can't keep an eye on him at all. For all I know, now he could be collecting rare specimens in broad daylight right now. He's too passionate for his own good. Aren't you too passionate for your own good yourself? <laughs> the main reason why I'm worried about him, however, is that he has no sense of direction, you see. He may have a bad attitude, but don't let that get to you. Okay, I'll help. Felix, come here. Hmm. He looks bratty. <laughs> he does. Ugh. I don't need anyone to look after me, Uncle Huxley. <laughs> 